Chapter 341, Hearing the Poison. Translator, Radiant Translations Editor, Radiant Translations. Shi Wei and Senior Crimson Rock both gazed at Shuang. Shui pondered for a while. To him, survivability was paramount due to the overarching threat of the sorcerer god and the great demonic god. He was, after all, only a mere transcendent facing a lord of a material world as well as an ancient great demonic god from the Dark Abyss. As he did not know what their schemes would be like the moment both of them collaborated, ensuring his own survivability was very important so that he could continue fighting. In addition to those facts, he could only cultivate this single-world deity-ranked secret technique amongst the 18 belonging to Crimson Rock Mountain. I'll choose it then, Shuang answered. Brat, your decision is not wrong. Crimson Rock laughed. Regardless of how formidable your combat power is in this world, your survival has the highest importance. Only then will you have hope. For instance, my master is a powerful existence in the deity world, yet he died without any ability to retaliate thereafter when schemed against by others. If the sacred master had spent a little more effort on his own survivability, he might not have ended up like this. Come, let's leave this place. Crimson Rock brought Shuang along with him. The three of them flew above Crimson Dust Island at a speed of 50 kilometers per second to enjoy the scenery around them. That canyon. Shui Ying could see the entrance of a canyon, the one he had seen in the record of the creation of heaven and earth. There are many records left behind. The gorgeous crimson rock elaborated, including the creation of heaven and earth record. There are many records left behind by world deities, and disciples of my crimson rock mountain can view at any time. You can as well. Shui Ying nodded. When he had watched the creation of heaven and earth last time, he had found it too short. After they flew for more than 5,000 kilometers, the gorgeous crimson rock waved his hand and caused a lake to materialize where a forest was. At the absolute center of the lake stood a sculpture. Hu hu hu. Shui Ying, crimson rock, and Shi Wei landed on top of the lake, striding across the surface of the water toward that sculpture. See that sculpture? Crimson rock pointed out. Shui Ying nodded. The sculpture stood as tall as an ordinary human atop the surface of the lake, both its hands raised aloft. The sculpture, black in color, was of a long-haired male with eyes displaying endless vigor. This sculpture is of a largely successful cultivator of the time immemorial scripture. This is his time immemorial body, Crimson Rock introduced. Time immemorial body? Shuang asked suspiciously, is this a corpse? Shi Wei could not help but giggle. You are really daring. The creator of the time immemorial scripture produced this magic avatar with a time immemorial body. Having been largely successful, the creator had condensed his deity energy as a gift for our sacred master. For all time, this time immemorial body can pass down this cultivation technique to others. Who is this powerful existence? Shuang could not help but ask. I cannot say. I cannot. Crimson Rock shook his head. Shi Wei shook her head too. Dong Bo, you have to remember that we cannot speak the name of any powerful existences. The moment you say one of their names, no matter if you are in the material world, the deity world, or the dark abyss, the powerful existences will be able to sense you. If those powerful existences are not feeling amiable, they might just kill you with a single thought despite being separated by countless spatial dimensions. Shui Ying felt his lips twitch. All right, you are here to receive the secret technique, so stand in front of that sculpture. Step forward, Crimson Rock commanded. Shui Ying nodded and immediately approached. He walked up to the black-colored sculpture and stared into its eyes. Only two meters of space separated them. Wang! An undulation shot out from the eyes of that sculpture, directly entering Shui Ying's eyes. At that moment... Shui Ying could only feel his head rumbling. A huge amount of information transmitted into his brain. I, Dongbo Shui Ying, hereby swear under the witness of his majesty, the bloodshed god emperor, Shui Ying could not control himself as he swore an oath. In the space before him, a faint oath written in a large script materialized. This sculpture possessed an array that forced the recipient to swear in. The Bloodshed God Emperor was none other than the highest ruler of Bloodshed God Palace. 
Shuiying felt a grandiose, mystical undulation transmit from a very far distance. It swept through the local region before disappearing. Despite having no choice but to swear this oath, Shuiying understood why he had to do so in his heart. He also knew that the one who sent his conscience over to assess the locale just now must have been His Majesty, the Bloodshed God Emperor. Indeed, one should not mention the names of existences on this level. The moment one mentioned a name, he would be exposed even if he hid himself in a very remote region. The oath had been sworn. Countless information materialized in his mind, slowly becoming solid. Eventually, a sculpture appeared in his mind. It was that black sculpture, that time immemorial body. This sculpture felt towering in the mirage, as if it would eternally stand there in the center. Countless seals covered this sculpture. So that's how. Shui Ing comprehended a portion of the information. The time immemorial scripture was truly boundless. He was just a tiny transcendent and could not receive it completely. Thus, the information had formed a sculpture in his mind. He had merely received the introductory information and the lowest level of training, the first level training content. The time immemorial scripture had nine levels in total. The body cultivated, the time immemorial body, was called a magic avatar in the deity world. The body would be immemorial, eternal across time. The moment one attained great success in the technique, his breath could easily destroy a world the size of the Xia clan world. Any powerful existence would have a hard time destroying this magic avatar. Hong, a white-robed Shuiing, stood on the lake before completely dissipating away. He already started cultivating it? That brat truly is impatient. Crimson Rock laughed as he waited with Shi Wei. Mirage body. His entire body transformed into countless particles as he fused with the mirage. Time immemorial. Shuiing visualized an extremely complex deity seal. The deity seal was three-dimensional in shape and was of a humanoid figure sitting cross-legged. As he continued watching and pondering over it, his own body began scattering apart. Each and every single particle that became one with the mirage started to become affected as well. The particles began transforming qualitatively. To ordinary mortals and innumerable transcendents, particles were the most fundamental, structural aspect of a fleshy body. The six ghosts' resentment hex poison, however, could permeate through every single particle precisely, because a particle itself could be broken down even further. Particles were made up of minute particles. Thus, the true meaning of particles was a grade 3 true meaning. The true meaning of the minute was a grade 2 true meaning. Time immemorial scripture, this world deity ranked secret technique was not easy to cultivate. Fortunately, Shui Ing had successfully cultivated the mirage body, allowing his body to completely scatter and fuse together with the mirage. By depending on the mirage and through the visualization of the time immemorial scripture, he could influence every single particle of his. Through visualization, he could delve even deeper, past the level of particles, and change the composition of the minute particles. Hong Hong Hong, as the minute particles were affected fundamentally, Every single particle making up Shui Ying's body trembled. These particles were slowly forcing the poison out, the six ghosts' resentment hex poison to be precise. Evidently, the new minute particle structures within the particles no longer allowed the poison to permeate Shui Ying's body. Such a body could not be permeated by even the most original six ghost resentment hex poison. This feeling is truly too amazing. Shui Ing could feel his fleshy body undergo a qualitative change. Every single structure within each particle transformed, causing his skin, muscle, bones, and organs to start transforming. The toughness of his skin rose up by a hundredfold, no a thousandfold. Most likely, even Chen Jiu or the Maishan clan master would be unable to even destroy his skin when using deity weapons to attack him. This was an overall, comprehensive improvement. Now, his fleshy body existed on a totally different level of strength when compared to Lord Yulan's demonic body. Chapter 342 The Xia Clan Strategy to Success Translator, Radiant Translations Editor, Radiant Translations This was a transformation on the deepest level. The new minute particle structure caused every aspect of his body to suddenly change. 
His hair toughened, stronger than many precious transcendent materials now. His bones strengthened, now capable of being used to forge deity treasures. His body was now significantly stronger than the deity body of many deities. After all, despite being a deity, only Shuang had been able to cultivate the precious, time immemorial scripture technique. From this, one could imagine how terrifying Shui Ying's body had become. Who? Some unquantifiable time later, Shui Ying opened his eyes. This. Shui Ying distractedly looked into the distance. On a tall mountain over ten kilometers away from Crimson Dust Island, a small centipede crawled over the stone-stepped path. Each and every fine strand of hair on the centipede's legs were clearly visible. Countless sounds vibrated within his ears, the frequencies ranging all over the spectrum. These sound waves crashed into a few mountains, bouncing back or perhaps striking a tree. In general, these sound waves scattered in all directions in a disorderly fashion. Every obstruction would instigate all kinds of minute changes in its composition. Countless sound waves. High or low, the frequency did not matter. Some sound waves previously inaudible to Shui Ying's ears were now perfectly clear, like the breathing of plants. Furthermore, Shui Ying could even clearly perceive, from the collision of innumerable sound waves, the positions of every blade of grass of even a broken rock a kilometer away. With only my ears, I can hear everything in a kilometer range? Shui Ying didn't dare believe this to be true and closed his eyes to verify if it was. Indeed. Everything was incomparably clear. This was a world comprised of sound waves. Innumerable sound waves created another kind of wonder in this world. Countless materials could also be perceived clearly. All of a sudden hearing countless sound waves would be tiring, no? It wouldn't be. Similar to how ordinary people could see countless crows with a single gaze and to how their ears could hear countless sounds, the formidable innate mental ability to easily filter everything continued to exist. One fundamentally wouldn't feel tired in the slightest. Just like how ordinary people, with a sweep of their sight, could see countless crowds and their ears hear countless sounds, the formidable innate ability within their brains would easily filter everything and one fundamentally wouldn't feel tired in the slightest. This is the feeling of a deity. Shi Wei and Crimson Rock looked from the side. Shi Wei opened her mouth and voiced, after becoming a deity, your deity energy would condense a deity body. Through this, you will discover your own change. Although your time immemorial body is merely at the first level, it's already significantly stronger than the deity body of ordinary transcendence. Therefore, your perception is even more acute. It's truly miraculous. Shui Ying's eyes flew open. I originally thought that I had to grasp the true meaning of waves or a similar law and profound mystery to be able to sense sound waves like this. I didn't think that merely by relying on my ears, I could accomplish this step. Through cultivation, your existence will unceasingly reach higher heights. Crimson Rock continued, naturally, you will attain several previously unimaginable techniques upon each ascension. As a transcendent, controlling time is inexplicably difficult, but deityhood and a deity domain will sharpen your perception toward time, gradually granting an influence over it. Crimson Rock then smiled and concluded, as long as you become strong enough, everything is possible. N. Dong Bo Shuang nodded. Atop the lake and despite being clad in white, Shui Ying felt himself be reborn. He extended his right hand, slowly opening it before abruptly clenching it tight. Standing atop the lake, although he was still wearing his white clothes, Shui Ying felt himself being born again. He extended his right hand, then slowly opened it up, then abruptly clenched. Pang! The air within the palm was instantly grasped and compressed. The sudden compression ultimately created a low-pitched boom. Just this clenching movement could possibly pinch Lord Yulan and the others to death with ease. Ordinary, newly ascended transcendents also couldn't bear Shui Ying's casual clenches. Too strong. This body is too strong. Although Shui Ying had mentally been prepared for this, the aftermath of the creation of a time immemorial body left him stunned. The time immemorial body really qualifies to be called a magic avatar secret technique that even world deity existences all long to receive. Crimson Rock faintly smiled, 
a smile so handsome that a glimpse was enough to infatuate innumerable females. Shuiying inwardly muttered, You deity spirit, how is it that such a slight smile makes you appear so handsome? Crimson Rock continued, Although it's merely the first level, the simplest one, it's already extraordinary. How come I can't feel my primordial bloodline? Shuiying asked. Primordial bloodline? Shi Wei was speechless. Little Shuiying, what do you think primordial bloodlines are? Bloodlines. Shuiying stared blankly. The latent bloodline, upon awakening, reforms the body, granting formidable strength, speed, etc. It can even grant control over thunder and lightning, influence over space, and more. Shi Wei sneered, yet right now, the composition of every particle in your body has changed. You have undergone a change akin to upheaving the heavens and earth. Amongst your Xia clan's primordial beings, even amongst the Dark Abyss demons, have you heard of any bodies comparable to even a percent of your current body? At the moment, you have the most powerful bloodline since the beginning of your Xia clan world's history. Crimson Rock burst out laughing. Your bloodline far surpasses all primordial bloodlines, even the best demonic bloodlines. Dong Bo Shuang was stunned. All right, all of that was completely correct. His body had now far exceeded the transcendent stage. All those bloodlines he had heard about paled in comparison to what he now had. He could even pinch newly ascended deities to death. This body was clearly heaven-defying. After all, Crimson Rock Mountain had a total of 18 world deity-ranked secret techniques. Despite cultivating three true meanings, he could only cultivate one such technique. The severity of the cultivation requirements was more than evident. I previously thought that upon reaching the stage three realm of the true meaning of star, I could cultivate an immortal star body by guiding the forces necessary to strengthen the body. I had realized after that it was completely useless. Shuiying chuckled. You were thus rubbing mud on steel, one. Essentially, he's insulting the immortal star body by calling it mud and saying it is dirtying slash tainting a far superior substance, Shuiying. Immortal star body? This name is truly arrogant. A transcendent stage body strengthening technique, not even a secret technique, can be called immortal. Crimson Rock lightly shook his head, full of disdain. That's normal. Amongst transcendents, aren't there countless individuals titled king or emperor? Shi Wei commented. Shuiying listened and smiled from the sidelines. His mood was very good. Earlier, he had not expected that upon becoming an honorary disciple, his strength would rapidly soar to such an extent. If he wore a deity treasure armor and simply stood there, allowing others to attack unhindered, how many could wound him? Shui Ying clearly understood that the strength, speed, vision, hearing, and other benefits were simply natural supplements granted by his time immemorial body. The most terrifying aspects about this body were the survivability and durability. It ranked first amongst the 18 world deity ranked secret techniques in regards to survivability. Shui Ying himself could not figure out how to kill himself. Of course, this was also that his own vision was too low. His enemies were the sorcerer god and the great demon god. It was better to be a little cautious. Seniors, Shui Ying continued, Honorary disciples are to be granted a set of deity treasures, a freely chosen secret technique, and a freely chosen treasure from a list. I have already chosen a secret technique. Ignoring the matter of a deity treasure for the time being, I wish to choose a treasure from the list. I have some concerns. Shuiying looked toward the two in front of him. You two seniors know that right now, my Xia clan world is being threatened by the sorcerer god and the demonic god. The two of them are very likely to start a war and destroy my Xia clan, forever occupying the entire Xia clan world. This way, they can also prohibit any outsiders from entering Crimson Rock Mountain, thereby monopolizing Crimson Rock Mountain. We know of this. Crimson Rock nodded. Of the two of them, one of them is a material world lord, while the other is said to be the second most gargantuan demonic god. Shi Wei added, although, this does not affect us. To ultimately possess Crimson Rock Mountain, they still have to send transcendence to undergo the trials. Shui Ying bitterly smiled. To Crimson Rock Mountain, this has no impact, 
but to my Sia clan, it's a calamity. I want to ask, how should I choose a treasure from the list of items, which grants the greatest possibility in resisting the sorcerer god and the demonic god? Shuiang asked. His own scope of view wasn't enough. His Xia clan's most powerful elder was only at the deity level summit. According to the Temporal Temple, the Xia clan's defense strategy would lose 99% of the time. One must know the future wasn't set, and the Temporal Temple still left a tiny margin of success. Therefore, it was said to be a 99% of failure. If it was based on the Xia clan's earlier strength, it would have actually been a 100% chance of failure. Yet Shui Ying had now become an honorary disciple. Clearly, this began to rapidly increase the odds of success for the Xia clan. Shui Ying, however, had to use his resources well. The Xia clan didn't have anyone with a high enough worldview. But Senior Shi Wei and Senior Crimson Rock's worldviews were high enough. The two of them had all followed mighty members of the deity world. In terms of worldview, they might be even higher than the sorcerer god and the demonic god. This fellow is really intelligent. Crimson Rock shook his head, smiling. He knew to ask us. Chapter 343 The Sorcerer God's Greatest Reliance Translator Radiant Translations Editor Radiant Translations Dongvo, you little brat. Shiwei looked at Shuiying and shook her head. I'll speak honestly. Your Xia clan initially had no chance of victory at all. Now, however, there should be hope of your clan defending themselves in the infernal world. This is due to your assistance. Without your appearance, even the infernal world cannot hold on. Right, that sorcerer god and great demonic god do not actually care about your Xia clan. What they truly fear offending is the temple of the earth god. Crimson Rock reasoned, otherwise, why else would they prepare for such a long period of time? Shui Ying's expression changed slightly. Senior Shi Wei, Senior Crimson Rock, even with the great increase in my current combat power, I still cannot block them off. Do you know what the Sorcerer God and the Great Demonic God rely on the most? Shi Wei asked. Their deity avatars? Shui Ying replied. Hmm, that might be something significant they rely on, but that isn't really what the rely on the greatest. Shi Wei elaborated, the temple of the earth god, for example, could easily make a deity avatar. If the bloodshed tavern was willing, they could similarly have a deity avatar in your Xia clan world. Why would they not dare to occupy the Xia clan world and thus crimson rock mountain themselves? Why would the sorcerer god and great demonic god dare to do so? Shui Ying frowned. You have to know that the moment a deity avatar is awakened, It'll be able to stay in the mortal world for 3,000 years at most. Shi Wei explained, After 3,000 years, the deity avatar will naturally die. Without a deity avatar, the deity will not be able to secure the entire Xia clan world any longer. Unless, he plans to procure a new deity avatar every 3,000 years? That's too costly. Shuang nodded. That was right. Occupying the Xia clan world was easy but occupying it forever was tough. Seniors, then what exactly is their greatest reliance? Shui Ying asked anxiously. If I am correct, the greatest reliance they have is only of one type. Shui Wei continued, the sorcerer god is the lord of a material world, meaning he has completely refined a mortal world. That mortal world can be considered his backyard. He can enter it at absolutely any time or simply leave for the deity world. There will not be any obstacles hindering his travels. Shuang nodded. He understood this point. Lords of material worlds usually have one single goal. Shi Wei revealed to locate the closest mortal world so as to establish a stable spatial passage. After that, they will be able to send countless underlings to the other world to occupy it. These are usually the world deity lords, as they can easily bring resources back from the deity world to their home world. After that, the resources can easily be used to stabilize a spatial passage, allowing them to invade another mortal world. Shui Ying vaguely understood her explanation, and, inadvertently, his expression changed. Even though their true bodies cannot enter other mortal worlds, their underlings can do so and attack other mortal worlds. After completely occupying that world, they can then spread their religion. Shiwei said, the only issue to this is building a stable spatial passage. 
because the distance between any two mortal worlds is quite far, and since a world's spatial positioning is not fixed, actually building a stable spatial passage is quite difficult. Crimson Rock Mountain has resided on the Xia clan world for more than a million years. That sorcerer god should have started planning a long time ago. During this million-year period, he should have gained occupants of the nearby two mortal worlds as well as the mortal world nearest to your Xia clan world. After which, he'll use that mortal world as his springboard to build a stable passage directly into your Xia clan world before occupying it. As such, all is well as long as the space passage is built. The resources he must have prepared, like a large quantity of war castles, will be transmitted continuously through the stable spatial passage directly into your Xia clan world, allowing him to easily build a stable foundation. Xi Wei inferred, Thereafter, he will spread his roots to occupy the entire Xia clan world, sweeping away all opposition. His resources do not have to be transmitted through the temporal temple since he is the lord of a material world. He can directly bring resources from the deity world into the material world. Sending it through the various spatial passages, he'll be able to send them into the Xia clan world via the mortal world he has occupied. He has planned patiently for such a long period of time, all for the sake of this single day. He spread his religion through the Beast Clan for the sake of having the Beast Clan secure enough equipment and materials to build a stable passage. As long as he could temporarily build the passage, the resources he sent over will enable him to completely stabilize the passage. Shi Wei elaborated further, without the suppression by the Temporal Temple, he and the Great Demonic God could flood the world with all their resources. A lord of a material world isn't afraid of taking the risks since his avatar is the one risking it in the deity world, and even if it dies, he could still refine another one. Thus, the lords of a material world are usually very wealthy. He has planned patiently for such a long period of time, all for the sake of this single day. He spread his religion through the Beast Clan for the sake of having the Beast Clan secure enough equipment and materials to build a stable passage. As long as he could temporarily build the passage, the resources he sent over will enable him to completely stabilize the passage. Shi Wei elaborated further, without the suppression by the Temporal Temple, he and the Great Demonic God could flood the world with all their resources. A lord of a material world isn't afraid of taking the risks since his avatar is the one risking it in the deity world, and even if it dies, he could still refine another one. Thus, the lords of a material world are usually very wealthy. He can send countless weapons, equipment, and soldiers as much as he desires. The deity avatar can display an even more terrifying combat power under the aid of certain precious equipment. Shi Wei concluded, as long as they are willing, they can operate the entire Xia clan world as a huge castle. Nobody will be able to enter. Shi Wei finished, this is the only method I can think of by which they can absolutely occupy the Xia clan world for all eternity. After hearing that, Shui Ying's heart grew cold. This. He did not dare imagine a day when the spatial passage was stabilized, connecting the Xia clan world to another mortal world. With endless resources being sent in, there would be hundreds or thousands of deity world battleships invading their world with even more terrifying war equipment accompanying them. Do you understand now? Their own worry is the temple of the earth god. Shi Wei laughed. The belief of your Xia clan world belongs to the temple of the earth god, and for them to occupy this place is akin to stealing the meat of the temple of the earth god. How would the temple of the earth god agree to that so easily? The temple of the earth god should have a fleshy body prepared for a certain world deity to descend into at any time. This should be a formidable world deity, possibly a stage three realm world deity. Such a deity avatar could possibly destroy the stable spatial passage within moments. Thus, the sorcerer god and the great demonic god have to make preparations. They have to ensure everything is amply prepared. All this to suppress everything in one fell swoop. Shi Wei added, and for the sake of prevention, they might have made an agreement with the temple of the earth god. Shui Ying could not help but blurt out, will the temple of the earth god help them? That isn't very likely. Shi Wei shook her head. The temple of the earth god is, after all, spreading their religion in your Xia clan world. They wouldn't dare to betray the strong faith people have in them, but watching from the sidelines as a bystander, 
is highly plausible. Then what should my Xiao clan do? Shui Ying asked. They would never have imagined that at the most crucial moment, the Xia clan will have a transcendent like you emerging. Shi Wei shook her head again. If they fail, the biggest reason will because they let you off. Shui Ying felt helpless. They had already paid a huge price in dealing with him when they had inflicted him with the Six Ghosts Resentment Hex Poison. Prior to building a stable spatial passage, the Sorcerer God and the Great Demonic God would not have any decent methods of dealing with him. Sending down powerful treasures was, after all, something governed strictly by the Temporal Temple. Your Xia clan can continue defending from the Infernal World. Shi Wei articulated, Give up the Xia clan world and hide in the Infernal World, strongly defended against outsiders. This way, there will be a greater chance of survival. You could exchange the 100,000 deity crystals stipulated on the list. With this amount of deity crystals, you could purchase a huge amount of treasures, stabilizing the infernal palace even further. In addition, with your help, even if the sorcerer god and the great demonic god staked everything in assaulting the infernal world, you will still have a huge chance of successfully defending it. By defending the infernal world, you can cultivate peacefully till you become a deity, or even reach a realm that is more powerful. You are a native of the Xia clan. Therefore, when you become a deity, you can still enter the Xia clan world within the next 10,000 years, allowing you to completely destroy them in one swipe. Even if they fortified the Xia clan world, as long as you refine the world heart of the Xia clan world and become its lord, they will still fail. Shi Wei determined. Shui Ying frowned. Giving up the entire Xia clan world? Wait until his own combat power became strong enough before retaliating? If he truly had no other choices, he could only walk down this path. In the history of the Xia clan, there were cases of enemies that forced the Xia clan to retreat and stay within the infernal world. There isn't an absolute certainty of defending the infernal world, right? Shui questioned. There are no absolutes in war. After all, your opponents have resources at hand that far surpasses yours. Shi Wei explained, your Xia clan's only way of succeeding is through you alone. Shui Ying nodded. He understood the predicament they were in now. But there are countless of humans living in the entire Xia clan world. How can we let them be massacred? Is there any way for us to defend them, perhaps by forcing the enemies to retreat? Shui Ying asked. Defending the infernal world will require you to gamble your life already. Wanting to force them to retreat? That's even harder. Shi Wei surmised, you must become stronger. And acquire more resources. Is there any way? Shui Ying's eyes brightened. Become an inner disciple of Crimson Rock Mountain, Shi Wei answered. Chapter 344, Arrangement. Translator, Radiant Translations Editor, Radiant Translations. Inner disciple? Shui Ying felt his heart jolt. Shi Wei looked at him, and the edges of her lips inched up slightly. The sacred master receives several kinds of disciples. They are split into the ranks of honorary disciples, inner disciples, and personal disciples. Personal disciples have the highest status, followed by the inner disciples, and lastly the honorary disciples. Even so, the sacred master has only received a total of three personal disciples throughout his long lifespan, since the requirements for becoming one are extremely harsh. A disciple must either have a grade one true meaning or have grasped hold of a grade one deity heart in a cultivation period of 10,000 years. The sacred master will take initiative in receiving anyone who meets either criteria as a personal disciple. Shui Ying felt apprehensive inwardly. Becoming a grade one true meaning transcendent was incredibly difficult. Meanwhile, it was comparably easier to condense a grade one deity heart within 10,000 years of cultivation. One could first condense a grade 2 deity heart and then cultivate until it broke through to grade 1. Most grade 1 true meaning transcendents could condense a grade 1 deity heart within 3,000 years of cultivation. Of the sacred martyrs' three personal disciples, one was a transcendent with a grade 1 true meaning while another one had grasped hold of a grade 1 deity heart within 10,000 years. The last one was the sacred master's favorite disciple. The master actually broke his own rules to take him in as a personal disciple, Shi Wei revealed. The sacred master is already dead, so there's no chance he'll break any rules. 
That means the only ways of become a personal disciple are to comprehend a grade one true meaning or to condense a grade one deity heart within 10,000 years. Shui Ying helplessly replied, Had I the means to comprehend a grade one true meaning, the disaster the Xia clan is facing would likely have already been resolved. Shi Wei paused for a moment. She could tell from a glance that Shui Ying was still the most concerned about the calamity soon to befall the Xia clan. Shi Wei nodded. That is true. Should you grasp hold of a grade one true meaning, your combat power would be far beyond your current level, and you could simply force a triumph over the sorcerer god and the great demonic god's army. You could simply destroy that spatial passage in its entirety. On top of that, you only need to spread the news, and many powerful existences from the deity world would take the initiative to receive you as their disciple. The sorcerer god and the great demonic god? They aren't worthy of being mentioned. Even then, should you really grasp hold of a grade one true meaning, it would be best not to reveal you had done so. Otherwise, regardless of which master you accept, the others would still remember you and stop at nothing to eradicate you. Many of those incredible transcendents with grade one true meanings were actually killed during their period of growth, Shi Wei helplessly explained. As a result, a large portion of the grade one true meaning transcendence, which appeared throughout the long history, were all extremely vigilant, and they only dared to gradually make that information public once they became world deities. Shuang nodded. Grade one true meaning. In truth, he also desired to reach that realm, but according to various records he read, it was incredibly tough to break through. Such matters could not be forced, so the only option was to let nature run its course. As long as he did his best in his training, other matters were superfluous. Overthinking things might even affect his inner heart. I wouldn't dare say for certain that I can become a personal disciple, Shui began, but how can I become an inner disciple? Follow me, Crimson Rock said. A long stone step pavement, an area with many stone steps placed on the ground, spelled the path toward a towering mountain. Look, the three came over to the side of the stone pavement. Crimson Rock pointed ahead to a location in the distance. That is the path of reflection. It's meant to test your inner heart and is much harder than even the fifth fine leaf trial. Most disciples of Crimson Rock Mountain will come over to walk through this path of reflection after becoming a deity. The path is split into three sections. As a transcendent, you would only have to pass the first section to get the first qualification for becoming an inner disciple. Shuang looked at the path of reflection and a few thoughts on the subject surfaced. It seemed as if most powerful existences from the deity world placed a huge emphasis on the inner heart of cultivators. Soon, Crimson Rock and Shi Wei brought Shuang along to a nine-story pagoda. This is the Soaring Cloud Pagoda. Crimson Rock pointed to the nine-story pagoda in front of him. If a transcendent enters it, they will undergo transcendent-level battles, while deities would face deity-level battles. Pass the first six floors, and you'll attain the second qualification necessary to become an inner disciple. Once you complete both the Path of Reflection and the Soaring Cloud Pagoda to the ascertained stipulation, passing the first section of the Path of Reflection and the sixth floor of the Soaring Cloud Pagoda you will have fulfilled the requirements of becoming an inner disciple. Crimson Rock looked toward Shuang. These are the conditions fixed by the sacred master, and no one may change them. Shuang nodded. I understand. The path of reflection and the soaring cloud pagoda? These two trials requirements are very difficult to meet, and your current comprehension of the realms is still very much lacking. Crimson Rock shook his head. Wait some time before you attempt them. By this point, you should already be quite well aware that you have to cultivate bitterly and try your best to become an inner disciple before the war erupts. Amen, Shuang nodded. He had already become an honorary disciple and was essentially a strand of hope for the Xia clan. However, he had to become even stronger. Crimson Rock pointed to the empty space before him, where a few dense words suddenly appeared. Shui Ying could not help but reveal a joyful look at the sight of those words. If you are still an honorary disciple by the time the war erupts, you should follow this plan, Crimson Rock began. First, take the 100,000 deity crystals reward and use them to exchange for more treasures. What? Shuang frowned. Of those 100,000 deity crystals, 
I should use 30,000 of them to purchase a huge amount of deity corpses? They are for the use of your blood creeping flower. Crimson Rock explained, the blood creeping flower is a plant organism. It has a great amount of life force and is very large in size. It is quite suitable to be a weapon for war. It would be too slow to simply let it absorb world energy, while giving it deity crystals to absorb would be too extravagant. Thus, giving it deity corpses is the best option in between. The corpses of deities are filled with a generous amount of energy, and they're cheaper than simply using deity crystals. With 30,000 deity crystals, you can purchase enough corpses to let the blood-creeping flower evolve to the late-stage deity realm. However, I estimate that it would take it 10 years to reach the middle stage, and only after 30 years will it finally reach the late stage. Even if the blood creeping flower manages to only reach the middle stage of the deity realm, it is still different from ordinary deities. Its huge body can spout countless vines which can cover a region of 5,000 kilometers, and it is significantly harder to kill than a late-stage deity. Shuang nodded. Plant organisms had innately strong life force. You should hurry up and send the blood creeping flower back to the Xia clan world, Crimson Rock continued. You know the plant isn't a native of the Xia clan world, and only by becoming a deity within it will it not be immediately forced out. But if I send the blood creeping flower back now, won't everyone likely find out about it once it becomes a deity and creates a huge disturbance? Shuang frowned. It'll be even better if they find out, Shi Wei delightedly said. If the sorcerer god and the great demonic god hesitate and delay the battle by 10,000 years, that will only leave you, brat, with more time to cultivate. After cultivating within Crimson Rock Mountain for that much time, who knows, you might even refine the world heart of the Xia clan world. Shuang frowned. From what you guys previously said, and with how well the sorcerer god and the great demonic god have prepared, it's quite unlikely that they would delay the war because of the emergence of a deity. Even if they choose not to delay, they would still want to get a clear situation of what the situation of the Xia clan is, and, more importantly, whether you died or not. All you have to do is stay within Crimson Rock Mountain. Don't take even a step outside. Do that, and it would be incredibly hard for them to find out about your situation. They might try to go through the Temporal Temple, but even the Temporal Temple can't see through Crimson Rock Mountain. They may only learn about you through the Blood Creeping Flower. That would be very troublesome for the Temporal Temple, so the price anyone would have to pay would be exorbitant. They would have to incur a huge loss of deity crystals should they want to buy the intelligence, at the very least, more than a million crystals. If they choose not to pay that price, they won't be able to find out any insider information, and that would be an even greater advantage for you. Shui Ing could not help but nod lightly. But if I do not return to the Xia clan world, Shui Ing began, how will I be able to communicate with the Xia clan? Crimson Rock Mountain is considered an independent world, and it is extremely close to the Xia clan world. Simply using a communication treasure would suffice for you to be able to communicate outside, Crimson Rock said. It doesn't cost much, just a hundred deity crystals. I'll add in some materials from Crimson Rock Mountain. This sort of material can easily isolate the object from all laws, so unless some powerful existence from the deity world personally acts, not even the temporal temple could see through the resulting treasure. Shui Ying immediately thought of a certain material. The sack left behind by Ancestor Black Wind could also easily isolate all laws from probing it. You can transmit messages and interact with the Xia clan at any time, but neither you nor your Qi avatar should return. If you follow that rule, the temporal temple will not be able to see whether you left Crimson Rock Mountain, even if they reverse time. For them to ascertain whether you're alive or dead, they would then have to go through the blood creeping flower, and the blood creeping flower would have already stepped into the deity realm by that point. To undergo an investigation on a deity realm plant organism is very difficult, so the temporal temple will demand a huge price should the sorcerer god and the great demonic god ask for such information. Crimson Rock smiled. Both he and Shi Wei knew many things and naturally understood the procedures. They were thus able to make use of fewer resources to greater effect. Shui Ying carefully considered the plan. He found no issues with it either. Shui Ying arranged everything that same day. Master, the blood creeping flower had transformed into a red skinned girl covered with green leaves and red flowers. 
Shua man, be wary when you go out. Go first to my hometown, Water Rights Town Snorok Castle, and find Jing Chio, Shueying ordered. Yes, the blood creeping flower was really obedient. All right, go now, lass. Go into the Xia clan world and grow. With those words, Crimson Rock waved his hand. Shi Wei's glance betrayed her complex feelings. Having never left the Crimson Rock Mountain for a very long time, she couldn't help but feel some envy. Who, the blood creeping flower disappeared, leaving Crimson Rock Mountain for the Xia clan world. Back in the Xia clan world, Jean Chio currently lived within the Snorok Castle of Water Rights Town in the Tranquil Sun Province of the Azure River County. She believed that, the moment her husband returned, he would certainly rush straight to the Snorok Castle. For years have passed. Jing Chiu held onto the railings, looking out at the snow-covered Snorok Mountain. She could feel a great weight pressing on her heart. The records wrote that getting through the sky-reaching vine would take three years at most. A feeling of unease flooded her heart. For years had already passed, and he had yet to return. She did not dare believe, and neither would she be willing to accept, that something might have happened to him. He'll come back. He must, Jing Chiu prayed to herself. Chapter 345, The Couple's Communication Translator, Radiant Translations Editor, Radiant Translations Jing Chiu left her abode and walked into Snorok Castle. The many descendants of the Dongbo clan within the castle all treated her with respect, bowing to greet her even when they were far from her. As for the servants and guards, they did not even dare approach her. At that point in time, Jing Chiu's status within Snorok Castle was the most unique, as both Shui Ying's partner and the most formidable transcendent within the castle. These children. Jing Chiu could not help but grin when looking at the still young descendants of the Dongbo clan. Shui Ying, you told me we would certainly have our own children. Not too long passed before she was outside the castle and walking toward the peak of the mountain. Amen? An expectant feeling filled Jing Chiu as she looked toward the sky. Distantly, a crack formed in space, out of which a lovable young girl flew. Her skin was red, and she seemed to be covered from head to toe with green leaves and red flowers. Who is this? Jing Chiu was puzzled. This is Snorok Castle. No outsiders may enter without permission. White fog condensed into the form of an ape which stood there, obstructing the path of the girl. The white fog ape was on full alert, knowing that the girl before him was not normal. Haha. <laughs> the girl immediately revealed a look of excitement. I've indeed found Snorok Castle. I, Shui Man, am very intelligent to find it so quickly. By the way, where is Meiju Jingqiu? I am here to find her. Who are you? The white fog ape frowned. The girl, being able to easily tear through space, should have the combat power of a demigod. How could it just let her enter like that? Dongbo Shui Ying is my master, and I've come here according to his orders, the girl explained. The white fog ape was startled. Shui Ying? You're here on Shui Ying's orders? A figure appeared in midair to the girl's side. It was none other than Jing Chiu. Her true body remained at the peak of the mountain, while she merely borrowed the clan protection arrays to condense an energy body. Shui Man glanced at Jing Chiu before kneeling down in midair with a joyful look. Shui Man greets Master's wife. Do you have any proof? Jing Chiu did not believe her immediately. Mistress, please have a look. A fiery red spear appeared in Shui Man's extended hand. Jing Chiu immediately snatched the spear from her hand. As she caressed it, she mumbled, The stellar fire cloud spear? Why would his spear be here? Did something happen to Shuang? How important was a weapon to an expert? After Shuang was cured of the hex poison, his Dantian Qi Si had long since filled back up with demigod Qi. He could now use deity weapons, so he naturally found a better weapon on Crimson Dust Island. This stellar fire cloud spear was temporarily being used as a form of identification. You will understand the moment you refine this, Xuan Man said, as she threw over a truly beautiful red ring. Hua. The ring soon reached Jing Chiu's true body at the distant mountain peak. She extended her fine finger and easily refined it. Using her spiritual energy, she could immediately sense an image imprinted within the ring. 
Jing Chiu. A white-robed Shui Ying smiled at her. Shui Ying, this is... Is this an image you left behind, or are you really talking to me? Jing Chiu felt her heart palpitating in disbelief. She was afraid, afraid that Shui Ying had already died and left behind a scene of himself. Of course I'm really speaking to you, Shui Ying replied. As soon as she heard his reply, Jing Chiu's tears began gushing down. Don't cry, Shui Ying murmured. And then, Jing Chiu immediately nodded. How's the situation like for you right now? I have succeeded. Shui Ying revealed a grin. I passed the sky-reaching vine trials and am now an honorary disciple of Crimson Rock Mountain. I've already cured the six ghosts' resentment. I was also the first to become an honorary disciple, though the Maishan clan master is on course to also become one, should no accidents happen. Jing Chiu was overcome with immense joy. She had been plagued for quite a while with worry, and palace head Chen had been the same. Though none of them dared to say it aloud, deep down in their hearts, they had a vague feeling that Shui Ying was quite possibly already dead, since he had left for far too long. Let Shui Man pass the storage treasure over to you, Shui Ying said. All right. Jing Chiu immediately went over as requested. Shui Man had flown over to the peak a while ago, and she respectfully passed over a jadeite wristband. Jing Chiu could immediately sense how big the storage space was within the treasure after she refined it. Jing Chiu, I have a very important matter to discuss, so you should listen carefully to what I say next. Shui Ying began telling her about the various matters of importance, so she could handle them. As a transcendent mage, she immediately memorized and understood his words despite him explaining them only once. Amen, I understand. Fifteen years. All right, understand. These treasures, they are worth eight thousand deity crystals? This blood-creeping flower is so formidable? You have bought so many deity corpses for her? All right. Jing Chiu interjected every now and then as he spoke. Her heart was truly filled with joy, for she knew her husband was alive. This, in and of itself, was already a great source of happiness, but he had even successfully gotten his poison cured. Now, they could truly accompany each other for a very long time. After half an hour of proper business discussions, Shui Ying, I see now that you've become very naggy, Jing Chiu teased. This is a matter of utmost importance for the Xia clan, so I can never be too careful, he replied. She smiled back. Rest assured. I'll definitely do these things you asked of me properly. I'll report to you after I've finished each of them. Of course I'd trust you, my wife. You're the most formidable transcendent mage in the past thousand years. Shui Ying praised her, though his words rang true. Jing Chiu might have become a transcendent later than Shui Ying and Yuan Qing, but she was still quite young. And even then, mages were, by nature, very reliant on getting experience. Thus, with her being a mage, Jing Chiu's cultivation speed was actually truly formidable. So much time has passed since we last met, yet when you finally contact me through this communication wristband, all you're saying is some pitter-patter and a huge load of business talk. Don't you have something that you truly want to tell me? Jing Chiu asked. Air, Shui Ying immediately racked his brain to find an answer before finally smiling. Since I've already gotten the poison cured, just wait until I leave the place. We'll make a kid. Wait, no, we'll have a bunch of children. Jing Chiu's face turned bright red. A bunch of them. Rest assured. Our children will certainly have the most formidable bloodline in the history of Xia Clan. Despite his joking about, Shui Ying was fully confident in those words. As someone who succeeded in cultivating the time immemorial body, his bloodline now was absolutely above other primordial bloodlines and demonic bloodlines. The same day, Jing Chiu left for the Infernal Palace, where she met Palace Head Chen. Jing Chiu, why have you come? Palace Head Chen was relatively startled. Are there news? I've been tasked by Shui Ying to inform you, Jing Chiu began, that the war with the sorcerer god and the great demonic god will likely begin in fifteen years. Palace Head Chen was momentarily shocked. Shui Ying is back? He has not returned from Crimson Rock Mountain. Instead, he asked one of the other life forms to send this information over. Jing Chiu explained. Is he alive or dead? Palace Head Chen asked. 
I am not sure of that either, she answered. This was also among the matters Shuang had asked of her. The news regarding his becoming an honorary disciple could not be leaked to any people except for her. Inside the mountain, Shui Ying gained some other information, including the news that the sorcerer god is the lord of a mortal world. Jing Qiu passed on everything Shui Ying told her, and palace head Chen's expression changed drastically in response. Shui Ying has also obtained some treasures which he sent over. Amongst them are some which can help cultivation. Palace Head Chin, you should decide how to split and let the strongest demigods of our Xia clan use. Who knows, we might even see a new deity emerge. And then, Palace Head Chin nodded. He immediately received the storage treasure. Shui Ying had exchanged for quite a large amount of spirit liquid and spirit fruit, as well as other precious resources which were all meant to aid in cultivation. He hoped the Xia clan would see one or two more deities emerge. Of them, a small part had been left to Jing Qiu, while all of the others were to be given to Palace Head Chin for him to arrange. Palace Head Chin very soon decided on whom should receive the resources. Having previously been secretly migrating people only, the Xia clan finally started moving with purpose now that they gained more information and understood that the war would be much more cruel than they expected. Furthermore, they even knew an approximate time for when the war might erupt. None of them dared put their hopes on wishful thinking any longer. The transcendent clans were moving their people, which consisted of mostly legend rankers and talents from other aspects. After all, the infernal world was only so big. It seemed unfair, but they had to first ensure the survival of the most talented. This sort of exodus would always be cruel. The entire Xia clan world became chaotic as all those who received the information tried to move their families and clans into the infernal world. Chapter 346, Cultivation Eden. Translator, Radiant Translations Editor, Radiant Translations. Crimson Dust Island. Inside the Cultivation Eden lay a cultivation room reserved for honorary disciples. Other than the them, nobody was allowed to enter this pocket of space. The room was octagonal in shape with a conical roof. Above it were countless golden deity seals, 18 bluish jade cores, 9 dragon essence pearls glowing a faint gold, and a bloody red blood jade placed right at the center of the room. The bluish jade core was a very special type of treasure that could only be found in certain deep underground regions of icy planets in the deity world. The dragon essence pearls, faintly glowing gold, were only obtainable from divine dragons that were at the peak of the deity realm. The most precious item, the blood jade, could only be procured as a very small fragment from the depths of the legendary blood sea abyss in the dark abyss. That small piece alone was worth more than 500,000 deity crystals. The value of this single cultivation room breached 3 million deity crystals. That was enough to empty the pockets of most ordinary world deities. Naturally, Shuang alone had the rights to use it. Truly comfortable. As he sat cross-legged within the cultivation room, he felt more comfortable than ever before as unseen energy endlessly filled his body and permeated his soul. Such a feeling was very similar to eating those spirit fruits and precious resources. Furthermore, the surrounding world energy formed a vague fog which could be easily absorbed at a rate not any worse than absorbing origin stones. It was quite clear that, to an honorary disciple, origin stones were no longer a luxury. It's no wonder faction head Chao Qing could open his inner deity see after cultivating in this cultivation Eden. Shuang looked around him, praising the place. Truly amazing. This totally transcends my imagination. Time acceleration, increased by tenfold, Shuang said. Wang. Time immediately began accelerating within the cultivation room. With every ten days that passed inside the cultivation room, a single day would pass outside. A hundredfold. Shuang was trying to grasp the situation properly. He had already experienced the feeling of a hundred times time acceleration within the second Vine Leaves Canyon. Time acceleration, a thousandfold. Shuang said, causing the time acceleration in the cultivation room to further increase. Shuang's expression changed slightly. He felt the surrounding space vaguely distort and the laws of the world be altered. Time acceleration, 10,000-fold. 
Shui Ying shouted out the maximum time acceleration available to honorary disciples. Hong. It seemed as if the space in the entire cultivation room froze. The laws had all been somehow messed up. The powerful time force would constantly destroy the balance the laws of the world had. No wonder. Shui Ying shook his head. It seems that what Senior Shi Wei and the others told me was true. The effect of time acceleration isn't some incredible shortcut. As soon as I increased the acceleration by 10,000, it destroyed the inherent balance of the laws of the world. Shi Wei and the others had already explained, to use time acceleration to hasten up your cultivation? What a joke! Any powerful existence in the deity world can easily increase the speed at which time passes by 10,000 or even 10 million, while those from the temporal island are even more formidable than that. If, if one could easily enhance their combat power in the environment of time acceleration, the temporal island could have easily groomed underlings on a rapid basis. If you ride a battleship moving at high speed, the scenery outside will blur. By that same principle, in a time-accelerated space, the originally stable laws of the world will warp and blur. From ancient times and until this point, I have yet to hear of a single person whose comprehension broke through under the environment of time acceleration. Shui Ying finally understood those words. It was no wonder, no wonder that Chen Jio still failed to break through his bottleneck despite having cultivated for such a lengthy amount of time back in the second vine leaf world. It was the same in the case of Maishin clan master and the others. Even his own improvements with his The Three True Meanings were negligible. What he instead accomplished was to consolidate and improve his secret skill. Within the cultivation room where time was accelerated by 10,000-fold, Xue Ying was currently feeling really intense. The balance of laws of the world was so distorted that he could no longer feel them clearly. Whenever time was sped up to such an extent, it could only be used for combat or ordinary living, while cultivation was entirely impossible. It only makes sense that the time acceleration in the second vine leaf world only goes up to a hundred times at most. Shuang nodded. At a hundred times the normal speed, the laws of the world are still relatively clear, or at least I wasn't affected at all when it came to studying and improving my secret skill. However, anyone seeking to break through a bottleneck or hoping to truly feel the laws of profound mysteries have to do so at the standard flow of time, while contemplating the clearest version of the laws. Even then, it's already done a lot for me. Shui Ying revealed a grin. I was able to improve my secret skill, star meteor annihilation, but how could a single move be considered a spear technique? I absolutely have to continue researching and see if I can't come up with others. He would bump the acceleration up by a hundredfold and continue researching for more secret skills, while a normal time flow was reserved for pondering his true meanings. Who? He closed his eyes and immediately began meditating. He could not be bothered to care about what happened in the Xia clan world after he passed down the information. For the moment, he had to reserve his undivided focus for increasing his combat power. The best case scenario would see him becoming an inner disciple. This is truly different. Curing his poison had an effect similar to his soul being released from shackles. His cultivating of the time immemorial body had brought about a nourishing effect to his soul, alongside the strengthening of his body. On top of that, cultivating within the special room had an even more wonderful outcome. Due to these three aspects working together, Shui Ying's cultivation process felt incomparably smooth. As he pondered over the profound mysteries behind his true meanings, he found answers to all of those questions plaguing him at a frantic pace. He was breaking through and comprehending other things before he knew it. Previously, he had been training primarily his spear techniques and had not been able to fully concentrate on his comprehension, but right now, he could properly focus while only occasionally bringing out his black spear to test his various theories. The weapon he currently used was a low-grade deity-ranked spear with a pitch-black body. He was limited in what he could use, since most demigods could only unleash the power of a low-grade deity rank weapon at the very most. Except for the blood-refined deity warriors, which could resonate with his own soul, that is. Only by using one of them could he hope to unleash the power of a top-grade deity rank weapon. Elder Ao Lan, for example, could use the Sorcerer God Sword, and Jing Chiu resonated with Ancestor Snow.
Both the Sorcerer God Sword and Ancestor Snow were top-grade deity rank weapons. Shui Ying, however, had no such coincidental luck to find a weapon which his soul resonated with. He was therefore forced to choose this low-grade deity-ranked spear made from superior materials, called the Black Crow Spear. It was said that the spear had been refined from the bones of an organism by the name of Black Crow, which was famed for its great toughness. Shui Ying remained alone on Crimson Dust Island. All of the other disciples who were cultivating on Crimson Rock Mountain had, when the sacred master died, long since left for the lower world. Strictly speaking, there was another person on the island, the treasure spirit, Senior Crimson Rock. The Path of Reflection. Shuang stopped. He looked up ahead to see a long road covered in stone steps stretching before him. The road extended all the way to the peak of the distant mountain. If I'm to become an inner disciple, I must cross the first section of the Path of Reflection and pass the sixth floor of the Soaring Cloud Pagoda. Shuang thought as he took the first step. As soon as his right foot touched that first stone step, he could already feel his body sinking. A feeling of weakness enveloped his entire body and shrouded even his soul. He felt incredibly tired, as if taking even a single more step would be too arduous a task. Interesting. Shui Ying's inner heart was so powerful that he could talk cheerfully and wittily even under the torture of the hexing poison. This simple sort of weary spell he could still easily overcome. Continue. He kept moving, step after step. The further he walked, the greater that feeling of weakness and fatigue became. That feeling extended not only to his body, but even to his soul. Endless waves of weariness surged in his direction, and he felt as if he might lose his consciousness at any time. He had not thought he would feel such fatigue even after cultivating the time immemorial body. He was unaware, however, that what the path of reflection truly targeted was the soul and inner heart. Even the most tyrannical body in existence would be useless here. Walk. I've got to keep walking. It's still very early. Shuang was doing his best to maintain consciousness. He took step after step. But with every one of those steps he took, he would start swaying even harder, and the feeling seemed to become really taxing on him. After each step he took, he had to summon all of his effort just to maintain his consciousness and to extend his foot forward once more. Pang! Finally, the endless waves of fatigue completely submerged Shui Ying's consciousness. Even his powerful inner heart could no longer take the pressure. He fainted and immediately fell down the stone steps toward the plain air below. Shui Ying was, for the moment, in a deep sleep with his eyes closed. Clearly, the weariness caused him to fall into the deepest sleep. With a piyu tong sound, he slammed into the ground from a height of 800 meters, pressing down onto the flowers and grass. Wu. The impact finally woke him up. He slowly blinked and looked upward, only to finally realize his situation. Did I fall asleep just now? Chapter 347. The Two Seniors. Translator. Radiant Translations Editor, Radiant Translations. He had actually slept? In the four years since he entered Crimson Rock Mountain to fight while risking his life, he had never slept. In truth, at the level he was at, sleep, while a possible habit or a pleasure, was never really necessary. Even so, as he fell from the path of reflection just a moment ago, he had actually entered a deep sleep. Despite lasting for mere moments, after crashing onto the floor and waking up, he had a feeling of being very at ease. Am I only able to walk half of the first section of the Path of Reflection? I'll give it a few more tries. Shui Ying once more took stride, arriving at the start of the Path of Reflection so fast he left behind after images. He once more began scaling the stone steps. One step after another, he walked continuously upward. Just like before. The feeling of tiredness engulfed his soul, growing stronger and stronger. Shui Ying sought a type of transcendent disposition, similar to the one he had when he reduced the influence of the hex poison's pain to a minimum to maintain his calm state of mind. That feeling of weariness brought forth by path of reflection, however, was endless, and it only got stronger and stronger over the unceasing ascension. It far exceeded the influence of the hex poison. Awake. I've got to stay awake. This is all just an illusion. 
Shuang tried to empty his soul of all distractions. Even when the sandstorm covers the sky, I will stand strong. Somewhere in the distance, there were four figures standing side by side in midair, looking at the faraway Shui Ying bloodily falling asleep and falling down time after time on the path of reflection. Specifically, these figures were Shui Wei, Crimson Rock, a youth wrapped in thick robes, and a scarlet-cloaked youth. As he watched the scene, the thick-robed youth commented with a smile, this youngster must be pretty strong to attempt the path of reflection again and again. This is already the sixth time, right? He actually managed to walk 20 steps more than that first time from a few moments ago. He actually improved in such a short time. Perhaps there really is hope of him becoming an inner disciple and joining the ranks as our younger brother. Old Seven, do you agree with my assessment? N. The scarlet-cloaked youth nodded. He just cultivated the time immemorial body, and his body is still in the process of nourishing his soul. In no more than ten years, his soul will already have become twice as strong as now. Say, is there any chance he'll take us out of here in the future? The thick-robed youth asked. How hard would that be to take us out of here? The scarlet-cloaked youth shook his head. The material world's laws are incomparably overbearing. Even most of the stronger members of the deity world can't force their way here. It is only a mortal world's owner who can freely enter and exit it, but even, they can only bring back a few dead things or ordinary transcendence from the deity world. Experts at the deity level or above simply cannot be brought into the material world. That is, unless one has an Eden treasure. Eden treasures can carry living things and shield them from the material world's probing. Back then, we were in Crimson Rock Mountain when we forcefully thrown into this material world. To obtain an Eden treasure is no easy task. Even the Sacred Master only had this Crimson Rock Mountain as his sole Eden treasure. Second brother, we can't be too hurried if we're to have any hope of leaving this place. What we need is patience. I understand. The thick-robed youth softly nodded. The thick-robed youth immediately grinned, looking to the side at Crimson Rock. Senior Crimson Rock, about the Sacred Master's conditions, can't they be lowered a bit? They must be a direct disciple or a world deity, Crimson Rock clearly stated. Nobody except for an incredibly talented transcendent who comprehended a grade one true meaning would have any hope of avenging the Sacred Master. Unless they become a world deity, they simply cannot refine Crimson Rock Mountain. A transcendent with a grade one true meaning, or one who can grasp a grade one deity heart within 10,000 years. The thick-robed youth shook his head. For how long Master lived, he only found two disciples who could meet these requirements. Even if Shui Ying does become a world deity, if he can't also reach the rank of direct disciple, where would you propose he go in order to find an Eden treasure? Even back then, from all us fellow disciples, only senior brother Hui Ming had an Eden treasure. Amongst the disciples of Crimson Rock Mountain, senior brother Hui Ming's position was very special. He was the head of the three great direct disciples, the target of all the disciples' worship. While still in the deity world, the brilliance he had displayed was even more dazzling than that of the sacred master, Crimson Dust. Even then, he wasn't an actual powerful existence. He nearly resembled one. We still don't know if Hui Ming has or has not become a powerful existence by now, the scarlet cloaked youth said. According to the old ancestor, he still hasn't, Shi Wei said. AI, of all disciples of the lineage of Crimson Rock Mountain, it's only senior brother Hui Ming who has any hope to become a powerful existence. What a pity, the same youth muttered, somewhat unhappy. From the side, the thick-robed youth also shook his head. There was even that time when senior brother Hui Ming wantonly dismissed his belief. Apparently, over a hundred million mortal worlds all were among his belief sources. But even so, the same faith which made him incredibly powerful also heavily restricted him and rendered him unable to struggle free. To take the leap and turn into a powerful existence is too hard. We've only been here, in the material world, for a million years. How could senior brother Hui Ming even hope to break through that fast? Let's speak no more of that matter. How about we continue watching this Dongbo Shuiing instead? The scarlet-cloaked youth looked toward a spot in the distance. He's already attempted the path of reflection ten times today. 
He seems ready to give up now. He's not giving up that easily. Look, he's actually going to the soaring cloud pagoda, the thick robed dude said. Other than Shi Wei, these two youths were the only two world deities in Crimson Rock Mountain. The inner heart must be frequently stirred. If neglected, not only will it not advance, but it might even decline. Shuiying actually somewhat enjoyed the path of reflection. Had it not existed, his only method to sharpen his will was to cultivate his spear technique again and again until his mind became one with the spear. In the end, however, this was less effective than the path of reflection, which directly targeted the inner heart. Walking the path ten times every day would be very beneficial to him. Shuiying soon arrived at the front of the majestic, towering pagoda with nine stories, the Soaring Cloud Pagoda. He had to pass the first six stories as the first requirement to become an inner disciple. The Soaring Cloud Pagoda's door had been wide open for a long time. Shuiying stepped inside. Inside the pagoda, a white-bearded old man was sitting cross-legged in a round, empty room. On his back, he carried two swords. The very moment Shui Ying stepped inside the room, that old man opened his eyes and smiled. He was inspecting Shui Ying with a beaming expression, and his eyes contained a trace of excitement. Someone has finally come. It's been so long since I've last fought that I was about to go crazy. My body here, on the first floor, is quite weak, and the power I may use is also quite weak. Even then, boy, it won't be so easy for you to achieve victory. Let me see how strong you are. Shui Ying's right hand extended, and a black spear appeared. He was boiling with fighting intent. After so many years, he was finally no longer bothered by the hex poison, while the time immemorial body filled his whole body with power. This surging feeling made him long for battle. Not only that, after entering the Soaring Cloud Pagoda, he quickly discovered that the space inside had no restrictions. Be it teleportation, space penetration, or anything else, they could fully used, together with all laws and profound mysteries. Make your move. Don't hesitate. The white-bearded old man just stood there without a care. Fine. Shuiying accepted the offer and charged forward in a flash. Shua. His body immediately used the extreme piercing to penetrate space and send an attack toward the white-bearded old man. Freeze. The white-bearded old man remained carefree after spitting out that single word. Immediately, the surrounding space completely froze. Originally in the middle of using extreme piercing, Shui Ying was forcefully pushed out. Space Deity Heart? Shui Ying's complexion slightly changed, but the movement of his hands didn't. His spear immediately thrust it out. Hong, the frightening strength of his time immemorial body made it so that even a casual spear strike imbued with extreme piercing was so powerful it could cause one's heart to tremble. The white-bearded old man's eyebrows creased. Chang Chong, he immediately unsheathed the two swords from his back, holding one in each hand. The dazzling sword lights moved as fast as lightning to intercept Shui Ying's spear. In response, Shui Ying only felt that the void seemingly did not transmit any energy. The two sharp swords crisscrossed and collided into his spear from the side. In what was basically a single exchange, the shaft of his spear was led to the side while the two swords stabbed toward him along the spear shaft. Too fast. The old man was so fast, even teleportation and extreme piercing seemed slow by comparison. Shui Ying immediately switched places with a mirage avatar, shifting his location to a hundred meters away. Sila, the white-bearded old man's two swords released a bright light. In but a moment, multiple thread-like sword lights crisscrossed, weaving over a hundred meters around Shui Ying's position. Regardless of which mirage avatar Shui Ying tried to switch with, he still couldn't escape the crisscrossing sword lights. On top of that, the sword lights and the space combined in a strange and obscure manner. At times, they would appear in one spot and then in some other place, making it all very hard to predict. Shui Ying's single secret skill, the Star Meteor Annihilation, could be considered to be a killing move focused on pure offense, but that meant he had no strong defensive moves. His only option was to do his best to defend. Peng, pen, peng. 
Multiple sword lights landed on Shui Ying's body, with some of them having even penetrated through space to ignoring the deity armor he was wearing to stab directly inside his body. However, in spite of multiple terrifyingly sharp sword lights stabbing his body from the inside, the blood, muscles, bones, and inner organs which received that attack all just vibrated faintly. Each and every particle in his body was incomparably tough, and they were able to easily ignore the force of impact. Just like that, the frightening sword lights, close to the star meteor annihilation in power, were all forcefully and easily resisted by Shui Ying's body. Even Shui Ying himself found this rather shocking. This body of mine, isn't it a bit too strong? Shui Ying finally understood why it was said that the strength, speed, and other aspects provided by the time immemorial body were all just a plus. The most amazing part of it was its survivability. Those sword lights being unable to pierce his skin was one thing, but even his inner organs remained completely uninjured after that attack. Your body could be twice as strong, and you still couldn't defeat me. You can't pass this first floor. The white-bearded old man stood not too far away, a sword grasped in each hand. Shui Ying stared at the white-bearded old man before him. He had to admit that only his secret skill, the Star Meteor Annihilation, was relatively strong. His other moves were all too simple. All of them combined together were still completely suppressed by the white-bearded old man's combat techniques. His opponent had grasped at least two grade two deity hearts, both of which combined very well together. This is only the first floor, yet his comprehension is higher than mine? Shuang muttered. Chapter 348, Becoming a Deity. Translator, Radiant Translations Editor, Radiant Translations. Still on the vast space soaring Cloud Pagoda's first level, Shui Ying clearly determined that the old man in front of him had a deeper comprehension of the realms than him. A battle doesn't depend solely on one's comprehension, so I would still advise Senior to be careful. Don't blame this junior for bullying you just because your body is too weak, Shui Ying said. Clearly, he had decided on a new direction of battle after the first clash. Come then, the white-bearded old man said with curled lips as he held a sword in each hand. Hong, Shuang charged the man. Within moments, his speed had increased to a terrifying thousand kilometers per second. He could only achieve such a speed now after successfully cultivating the time immemorial body. Simultaneous to his charge, the spear in his hand thrust out with lightning-fast speed. Poo pew pew. Countless afterimages of spears enveloped a huge region. In response, the old man simply used his two swords to deflect the spear techniques. He was about to retaliate when he was suddenly faced with a new assault by Shuang. So fast, the white-bearded old man's expression changed. The spear technique he now faced was truly too fast, with every single attack so powerful that it could split the heaven from the earth. A single attack might just match that of a middle-stage deity, which meant the white-bearded old man could break apart them apart. But now faced with countless attacks launched at the same time, he simply could not take it. They came so fast, there seemed to be no end to them. The old man was momentarily forced to retreat, and he did so through a distortion in the surrounding space. As soon as Shuang detected that the space in front of his very eyes was turning illusory, the distance between him and that white-bearded old man had already shifted. You actually thought you could defeat me just by relying on your strength and speed? The white-bearded old man's figure was strange and unpredictable. He would be moving to the left for a moment, and the very next would see him moving to the right. Each of those sword lights he unleashed were imbued with terrifying destructive force. In a panic, Shuang tried to block them, but a single one of those rays still made it to his body. Right now, his expression suddenly turned frigid. Hong, without warning, his black spear swept out horizontally. As it moved, the spear was becoming longer and longer, an ability which, just like shortening in size, any deity weapon could naturally employ. It was during the exact moment that the white-bearded old man closed in for an attack that the spear swept out over the surrounding region. Before the old man even tried to escape, he moved one of his swords to intercept the attack. Pang! The black spear whipped down on the sword, causing the sword to bend, 
with the spear body slapping down on the figure of that white-bearded old man. This caused him to arch his back and spit out a mouth of fresh blood. Shuiying used the opportunity to move even closer. His spear, now more than a hundred meters long, emitted a whistling sound due to its motion. He ignored the notion that the white-bearded old man might strike back, since his time-immemorial body could completely nullify any of his attacks. Instead, he launched a frantic offense. At times, he displayed the extreme piercing, which raised his speed to the maximum. Other times, he would use the true meaning of star, which allowed all of his strength to be completely unleashed and allowed him to suppress all in his path. During the most crucial moments, however, he would abruptly unleash the star meteor annihilation. Stop, stop. You can stop now, the white-bearded old man hurriedly shouted. You win, you win. You have that time immemorial body, so I can't hurt you no matter how I attack. I'll be injured as soon as you land a single hit, though, the old man muttered. Whatever, it's your win. You can proceed to the next level. This junior could only depend on his fleshy body to barely win this match, Shui Ying hurriedly replied. After all, combat basically boiled down to making use of one's strengths to exploit the enemy's weaknesses. He was weaker in terms of his comprehension anyway, so he had no way but to use his other strengths. The time immemorial body raised his defenses to such a tyrannical level that he could completely disregard even blocking attacks and go all out with his offense. On top of that, he could still make use of his strength and speed to overwhelm his opponent. A flight of wooden stairs appeared beside him. Shuiying took the stairs up to the second floor, which was very similar to the first floor. It had the same circular space, as well as a white-bearded old man sitting cross-legged. The only difference was that this old man rested an azure pole atop his knees. Brat, the fleshy body I had on that first floor was pitifully weak. Here, on second floor, the strength I can unleash has increased considerably. The white-bearded old man grinned before continuing with a sneer, Come now, you can make a move whenever you want. This junior will not delay any longer. Shuiying no longer hesitated. His figure disappeared from his initial position in a flash and reappeared in midair, his spear fiercely hacking downward. As it moved in an arc toward the old man, the spear stretched to become a hundred meters long. Hmph. The white-bearded old man grabbed the pole by its two ends and casually jumped up. Pang! The spear came smashing downward, while the pole rushed upward to meet it. When the two weapons clashed, the resulting impact created a shockwave that covered the entire second level of the Soaring Cloud Pagoda. Shui Ying felt the force of the clash be transmitted through his spear, which sent him stumbling backward in midair. His expression changed. Such incredible strength. He actually is no weaker than I am. No, I was actually smashing down on him after storing my energy while he casually struck back from his original position. Despite this, the result was still just a draw. He should actually be stronger. This body of mine, the white-bearded old man began, is comparable to those who succeeded in cultivating a mysterious gold heaven body. While its survivability might be below yours, it holds the advantage in terms of strength. All of the honorary disciples of my Crimson Rock Mountain usually practice world deity rank secret techniques. Shuang nodded. It made sense. His three true meanings were all just at the stage three realm, and it was his secret skill that let him actually reach the minimum level of honorary disciples. After all, honorary disciples would usually have at least condensed a grade two deity heart. That made it comparably easier for them to cultivate world deity rank secret techniques. The combat power I'm currently displaying can be reached by any honorary disciple who cultivates for a period of time, the white-bearded old man finished saying and immediately acted. A pole approached swaying like a flood dragon moving in water. It moved toward him with the force of a maelstrom. Shui Ying hurriedly moved his spear to block the attack. Hua! The pole pushed Shui Ying's spear to the side the instant they made contact, allowing it to smack his chest directly. Pang! While his time immemorial body allowed him to easily withstand such force, Shui Ying was still sent flying back from the attack. He did his best to regain his balance. Brat, your comprehension is still too weak. The pole swept over the surrounding area. 
No Mirage avatar within a hundred meters had any way to escape, and they all ended up being smacked backward. Your physical strength is also poor. In a head-on clash against the spear, the pole triumphed overwhelmingly and smacked swaying in the head. Your spear technique is made up of only that single secret skill, which is focused solely on offense. It is too easily broken apart. The pole easily smashed against Shui Ying's wrist with a rotation. Fortunately, the time immemorial body was formidable enough that it allowed him to keep tight hold of the spear. Ping, ping, ping. Shui Ying was completely suppressed. He was physically weaker and slower, and his combat techniques were not up to par. Even his ability to switch positions with his Mirage avatars was useless before his opponent's pole technique as it enveloped the surrounding 100 meters with a single sweep. Shuiying was smashed back into the boundary of the circular space and fell down from midair. He finally regained his consciousness after hitting his head on the ground. Still want to continue fighting? The white-bearded old man held onto his pole as he looked toward Shuiying. Not anymore. This is quite enough. Shui Ying shook his head. His head had suffered ten strikes of that pole, which caused him to feel dizzy. However, despite the torture which only now ended, there were no injuries visible on his skin, and not a single hair had dropped from his head. He now had a better sense of how tyrannically tough the time immemorial body was. Go back and cultivate. You've just reached the requirements of being an honorary disciple, and only have a single world deity rank secret technique at your disposal. You won't even triumph over the first level like this, the white-bearded old man said. Amen, Shuiying nodded. In spite of all that happened, after leaving the soaring cloud pagoda, Shuiying could not help but feel ecstatic. A fight with such a formidable opponent allowed him to discover even more flaws in his spear technique and shed light on many ways he could continue perfecting it. This Crimson Dust Island had the ability to speed time up, and he could watch the record of the creation of heaven and earth whenever he wished. He could walk down the path of reflection or exchange pointers in the Soaring Cloud Pagoda. The whole place was nothing short of a holy ground for cultivation. I have to make good use of my time as much as possible. I've no time to relax. If I succeed and become an inner disciple before the war erupts, my combat power should reach a level much higher than where I'm currently at. I believe that, by that point, I will have obtained the qualifications necessary to fight the sorcerer god and the great demonic god head-on. Shuiying looked forward to reaching that day. While Shuiying was bitterly cultivating on the Crimson Dust Island, back in the Xia clan world, in a location deep underground, a towering blood-creeping flower grew. Its enormous green vine, countless thin subvines, and numerous flowers permeated through the entire earth. The flowers on the thin subvines in the ground were currently absorbing energy from the many corpses of deity realm organisms. Hong, a terrifying wave suddenly emitted from the center of the blood creeping flower. At that very moment, the flower was undergoing a qualitative change. Above the underground area, a vast, mighty power gathered until it formed a huge ocean high up in the air. The mortals living in the surrounding cities all looked upward to watch the enormous oceanic illusion form in midair. They could hear the gurgling sounds of water moving, opening up a deity sea released waves that simply could not be hidden. Every last transcendent throughout Xia clan world could clearly feel these waves. Be they from the Xia clan, the beast clan, or the transcendents, Everyone could feel the emergence of a deity. Chapter 349 Distress of the Sorcerer God and the Great Demonic God. Translator, Radiant Translations Editor, Radiant Translations. What is that? All of those mortals in the many cities looked up in astonishment. Such a scene was truly too shocking. A vast ocean was forming in midair, with waves surging fiercely in an imposing and majestic manner. The image was so powerful that it caused the hearts of all those mortals to tremble. The ocean was large enough to cover an area of more than 5,000 kilometers. A huge ocean the size of a county appearing high up in the sky was a scene much more dazzling than even the sun. More than half of all the living beings in the Xia clan world were witness to the scene, while the other half could not see it because of clouds, tall mountains, or other obstacles. How can there be such a big ocean? Even legend knights and legend mages could not understand what this scene represented, much less the mortals. So, 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 
In various parts of the Xia clan world, many figures rushed up into the sky and then stopped in midair to look at the humongous ocean of seemingly endless might. Someone is opening up their deity sea? The transcendents were shocked at the sight before their very eyes. Deity sea? A deity domain? What's going on? Is a deity emerging? Who became a deity? The transcendents were all getting flustered. A man? In an ordinary village, Chao Qin, still disguised as an ordinary mortal garbed in tattered clothes, looked upward, his expression also shifting. Another deity? Who can it be? As a native of Xia clan and having received the blessing of the Xia clan world, he was able to quietly return after becoming a deity within Crimson Rock Mountain. Throughout history, whenever a deity would emerge, the Xia clan and the Beast clan would immediately investigate whether the new deity was from their side or the opposing one. If the deity didn't show themselves, it was clear that they were of the opposing clan. They would then helplessly retreat back to their transcendent world without hesitation. Even palace head Chen's Qi avatar left the infernal world for the mortal world in order to investigate this occurrence. Palace head Chen, this new deity, are they part of our clan? Palace Head Chen, is it a transcendent of our Xia clan who has become a deity? Palace Head Chen, this new deity is. Palace Head Chen was bombarded with large amounts of reports. The whole clan was anxious to get a better read of the current situation. Most ordinary transcendents would find themselves practically unable to resist against any newly emerged deity. What they were unaware of, however, was that this era was different. Shui Ying, for example, reached a level at which he could easily pinch an ordinary deity to death. The only problem was that the opponents this time around were the sorcerer god and the great demonic god's army. This led him to continue cultivating within Crimson Rock Mountain. Who exactly is it? Palace Hedchen was also trepidant. That was when a message reached him. Palace Hedchen, please rest easy. A surge of joy immediately filed Palace Hedchen's heart. The one who had transmitted this message was none other than Jing Qiu. He immediately replied, Do you know who the deity is? Could it be Shui Ying himself? No, that can't be right. Shui Ying had yet to even reach the stage three realm when he left. Mountain Lord He and Faction had Si Kong Yang, who both condensed true deity hearts, or Qi Qiu Bai who was already at the peak of the stage three realm in his grade three true meaning, any one of these personages was much closer to becoming deities. Shui Ying's talent was indeed splendid, with his three different grade two true meanings, but their realms were momentarily not that high. According to Shui Ying's own words, they had yet to even reach the stage three realm. It's not him but a plant life form he sent, Jing Qiu transmitted. This plant has already become a deity, and it is still improving and growing with each day. It will certainly prove to be of great use to us in the upcoming war. Good. This is great news. Palace Hedgen succumbed to great joy. Very soon, he had already transmitted a message to the large crowd of Xia clan transcendents. Everyone, you can rest easy. The newly emerged deity is one of our Xia clan. As their identity, we must temporarily keep it secret. The hearts of all those Xia clan transcendents relaxed for a moment before a mood of exultation erupted amongst them. Their side had a new deity? It was common fact amongst everyone in this era that the situation was becoming dangerous, as the Xia clan had already begun moving people in the dark. So now that a deity emerged in their ranks, how could it not be a joyous occasion? While an ecstatic mood covered the Xia clan, the atmosphere in the transcendent world known as the Oceanic Forest World was decidedly morose. In this world, there was a rigid castle, semicircular in shape with countless seals engraved on its exterior. This sort of structure could not move, but its defenses were even beyond those of a battleship D9. On top of that, the castle was wrapped in arrays that isolated its interiors from the external world. This was among the reasons why Shui Ying had not been able to enter it, despite investigating the Beast Clan for the past hundred years, he was poisoned. What way did he have of entering it, except for perhaps laying siege to it straight on? Even then, the castle was so incredibly sturdy that even Battleship D9 was powerless to destroy it. Hua Hua Hua. Inside the castle, a huge humanoid figure lay in the middle of a flowing lake of blood. His body was wrapped in crimson red scales, and his breathing was faint and slow. 
Beside this blood lake was an enormous skull, together with a golden-robed man. A deity has emerged among the ranks of the Xia clan, the skull representing the great demonic god said in a deep tone. You think I'm not aware? The golden-robed man said, his voice tinged with frustration. It's all your fault. You thought too much of yourself back then, and your fleshy body was destroyed, which meant we had to delay the war for 50 years. If not for that, we might have already occupied the entire Xia clan world. This new deity from the Xia clan, it would mean nothing if it were some ordinary transcendent, but I am afraid it might be Dong Bo Shuang. How am I to be blamed for this? The great demonic god Skull replied, clearly displeased. Do you really think I could have expected that an apex transcendent would suddenly emerge in the Xia clan? Had Dong Bo Shuang not set out to destroy the headquarters of my demonic faction while getting rid of that nearly complete fleshy body in the process, how could we have even discovered how powerful he was? How else were we to team up to attack him? It's precisely because we teamed up that he was inflicted with the six ghosts' resentment hex poison. Even under the influence of that hex poison, his combat power increased immensely. Without it, he would very likely had a secondary awakening of his bloodline, which would cause his body and soul to be undergo a qualitative change. By then, his combat power would have certainly been so much stronger than now. It's not necessarily true that if we had started the war 50 years ago, the situation would have been better, the skull of the great demonic god retorted. That golden-robed man did not reply, for he knew those words to be true. Shui Ying's rate of improvement was just that tremendous. Even with the hex poison influencing him, he was still able to fight on equal grounds with Lord Yulon back at Black White Deity Mountain. We've already set down an oath, so there's no need to blame each other any longer, the great demonic god Skull said. Right now, what we must decide on is our course of action. What is absolutely clear is that we have to clear up the facts. In other words, we have to find out whether Dong Bo Shuang really was the one to become a deity. The golden-robed man frowned. With his three-grade two true meanings, the threat he would pose as a deity would far exceed any ordinary deity with the grade two deity heart. Letting his comprehension grow any further would only increase his chances of refining the world heart. Should he succeed in that endeavor, he would become a material world lord, there would no longer be any point in fighting with him over Xia clan world. Even if he does become a deity, shouldn't he still take several thousand years to refine the world heart? The great demonic god Skull asked. If he becomes a deity after he returns to the Xia clan world, it basically means that he has already become an honorary disciple of Crimson Rock Mountain and has gained a huge amount of treasures in the process. Should that be true when we begin the war, he will certainly prove to be a huge obstacle, the golden-robed male revealed his assumptions. Amen. The great demonic god Skull pondered for a while before finally replying, if Dong Bo Shuang did become a deity, he would have very likely done so stealthily while still within Crimson Rock Mountain. He would not do so like this, in such an open area. He would have a longer period of time to continue growing. For the moment, I believe that this disturbance caused by the opening of a deity sea was not caused by him. I also think that the probability Dong Bo Shui in being the new deity is quite low. He's still too young after all, and condensing a grade 2 deity heart isn't so easily accomplished. Even if the probability were lower than it is, however, we still couldn't take the gamble. After all, our latest intelligence reports state that the new deity is also not one of the transcendents we know, like Si Kong Yang or Mountain Lord He. Even then, it's certain that the deity is one of them, is it not? Who else could it be than Dong Bo Shuang? The golden-robed male felt slightly frustrated. There were only so many Sta Clan demigods, and those who had the potential of becoming deities were so few that one could count them on the fingers of one hand. By process of elimination, the probability that Shuang became a deity was instead the highest. But his heart told him that Shuang becoming a deity so young could not possibly have happened. We can't take chances, the golden-robed male finally stated. There's no way but to clear up the facts. And how should we do that? The great demonic god Skull asked. Just earlier, we've sent Chi avatars over to the disturbance to investigate, but we were not able to find any signs. The one who became a deity has quite clearly hidden themselves in some other location. 
the golden-robed male rather unwillingly replied, through the temporal temple. Only they could clarify as to whom exactly has become a deity. Some ordinary transcendent becoming a deity was of no consequence to them, but Shui Ying being the one to do so would be terrifying news. All right, I'll go and ask. Let's see what price the temporal temple puts on this information, the great demonic god Skull said. Chapter 350, Nine Years Later Translator, Radiant Translations Editor, Radiant Translations Be it in a material world, the deity world, or in the dark abyss, one could find the temporal temple and the bloodshed tavern practically anywhere. The temporal temple offered to sell intelligence, help transport goods, and even send someone to some faraway place. Meanwhile, the bloodshed tavern was specifically used to put bounties on the heads of people. Its asking prices were very high. Every bounty had to follow a set of rules. As long as the price was suitable, there existed a point when even the chief tavern owner of the bloodshed tavern, that is, the grand bloodshed god emperor, could even personally act. There were cases of powerful existences of the deity world against whom the bloodshed god emperor would be willing to act and kill. The only issue was that the prices listed by the Bloodshed Tavern were, in one word, dark. The businesses of the two organizations spread over countless worlds. The great demonic god, De Er Hao, was a stage two giant demonic god of the Dark Abyss, but even inside his enormous territory, there was a temporal temple. On the other hand, the Bloodshed Taverns were extremely numerous there. They were so densely packed that they were impossible to count. That was because, on one hand, the great demonic god's territory was large enough, and on the other hand, the bloodshed tavern's business was practically to act against all living things. They were willing to do business among mortals. Naturally, the cost of such a thing was excessively large, and it allowed the demons of the dark abyss to always be able to easily find a bloodshed tavern nearby. Meanwhile, the temporal temple usually only collaborated with deities, the number of their temples was, naturally, relatively smaller. The skeletal jaw of the great demonic god opened to speak. I've asked them. How was it? The golden-robed man inquired. The price of information on the identity of the new deity is 30,000 deity crystals. A report on Dong Bo Shui Ying's current strength costs 100,000 deity crystals, the great demonic gods replied. What do you think, sorcerer god? Do you believe these two articles of information are worth the price? It actually costs only 100,000 deity crystals to receive information on Dong Bo Shui Ying's strength? The golden gown man frowned at the words. If a report on the strength of some random world's genius transcendent costed this much, he would have definitely considered such a price to be excessive. After all, that amount of crystals alone was enough to bankrupt many ordinary world deities. But Shui Ying was part of the Xia clan, which had control over Crimson Rock Mountain. On the eve of the battle, Shui Ying's strength would be considered a very important factor, so much so that it might even prove to be a decisive element. A price as low as 100,000 deity crystals wasn't quite in accordance to the Temporal Temple's character. Could it be that the Temporal Temple were not that harsh, but rather, they were unexpectedly generous? Could this be confirmation that it was not Shui Ying who became a deity? The golden-robed man frowned. The intelligence report, the great demonic god Skull asked. By them. By both reports, the golden-robed man affirmed. Great demonic god, you wouldn't mind covering this little expense, right? A small matter. The great demonic god nodded. Although the great demonic god was also a little distressed, this time right before the war was a crucial point for the preparations. I just knew there had to be a reason why the temporal temple would ask for such a low amount, the great demonic god growled. This intelligence report actually details the strength Shui Ying exposed way back at the Black White Deity Mountain. As for details of after that point, the temporal temple only states the following, Shui Ying has yet to come out after entering Crimson Rock Mountain. His strength is impossible to determine. Then who's the one who became a deity? The golden-robed man asked. The skull responded, some sort of plant organism called a blood-creeping flower. A plant organism suddenly entered the Xia clan world to become a deity? The golden-robed man slightly nodded. This plant organism, I'm afraid Shui Ying obtained it inside Crimson Rock Mountain and sent it out. However, 
Shui Ing himself hasn't revealed himself, so nobody knows if he is currently dead or alive. N. The great demonic god was also worried. Blood creeping flower? It made no difference. After all, the blood creeper flower might have had a tyrannical body, but its comprehension of the laws and profound mysteries was not be very high. Once the war broke out, that single blood creeper flower would have no way of stopping their troops. What was Shui Ying's exact strength back at the black white deity mountain? The golden robed man asked. If the Temporal Temple's intelligence report is to be trusted, Shui Ying has grasped three grade two true meanings of mirage, of star, and of extreme piercing. In addition to that, he had only reached the pinnacle of the stage two realm at that point, the great demonic god reported. Other than that, he has grasped a secret skill. It was by relying on that secret skill that he could match Lord Yulon, the skull continued. Oh! The golden-robed man slightly nodded, exhaling in relief. Very good. Having managed to create a secret skill, this Shui Ing can be considered the most gifted transcendent in the entire history of the Xia clan. He is very strong, but his cultivation is still only at the peak of the stage two realm. Cultivation must follow a gradual, steady improvement, and there's no such thing like skipping steps. It has only been about four years since he's entered the Crimson Rock Mountain. He might not even be at the stage three realm by now, much less close to becoming a deity. Right. The image of the great demonic god Skull nodded. There were, indeed, areas in the Crimson Rock Mountain where time was accelerated. But they both clearly knew that if one sought to perceive the laws of heaven and earth, time acceleration actually had a negative effect. It was only when time flowed normally that one's perception of the laws of heaven and earth would be natural and distinct. How much could he improve in a mere four years? We might have had to spend a few deity crystals, but it was worth clearing up the situation. The golden-robed man exposed a smile. Should we ask the Temporal Temple for a full investigation report on the strength of the entire Xia clan? The great demonic god Skull asked. No. Even if we did want to buy it, it would best be done right before the war breaks out. The golden-robed man shook his head. From my estimations, however, such a report would be very, very expensive. I'm afraid we might not afford to buy it. If, in a war, one could know every card their opponent would play in, they would have a much easier time attaining victory. But the price the Temporal Temple perceived to be accurate would be excessively high. It's fine. We've already received the best news in the way that we know Dongbo Shui Ing has not become a deity. With the level of his cultivation from four years ago, he should still be very far from becoming a deity, the golden-robed man said. We can take our time to gradually prepare and set everything in good order. When the time comes, we will directly crush them with unstoppable strength. The illusory great demonic god Skull approved. Just follow the plans we've already set. We can take it step by step. The golden-robed man shivered in anticipation. Let's hurry. It won't be long until it's time for war. There were very few things that they were anxious about. The great earth god was one of them. Dong Bo Shuang was another. As for anything else? Even if the Xia clan gave rise to a deity, it only signified adding a small obstacle onto their paths. Time passed. The Xia clan continued to migrate as they busily prepared on the eve of war. In the blink of an eye, nine years had already passed. At Crimson Rock Mountain. Who, who? Chin Jio soared into the sky, shoulder to shoulder with the green-haired woman, Shi Wei. They eventually broke through the world boundary and entered the higher-leveled space. Upon crossing that boundary, they continued to fly upward. They crossed the layer of rock and soil, passing through the void and layer after layer of clouds and mist, before finally arriving at Crimson Dust Island. Chen Jiu, the Maishan clan master, smiled at him. Brother Maishan, Chen Jiu also smiled. You have my congratulations for being the next to successfully make it here. These words came from the Maishan clan master's heart. He was aware how hard the situation was for all of them. In the first place, if even one of five team leaders had succeeded by a fluke, it would have still been not bad. Two of them making it was quite exceptional. In truth, with the addition of Shui Ying as a local transcendent of the Xia clan, a full three people made it through. 
It was by a fluke that I broke through the final bottleneck and grasped the only me deity heart after nearly going crazy, Jinjo said. Only me. The Maishin clan master nodded. Your usage of the true meaning of only me was better than mine from the very start. After all, having been able to research eight arms, your comprehension of the true meaning of only me was already extremely high. Having then grasped an only me deity heart is nothing strange. Chen Jiu smiled. This success really was akin to soaring toward the sky. That's right. What's the situation with Dongbo? Chen Jiu immediately asked. Of all the apex transcendents who entered this time, his relationship with Shuiing was the best. Ah, uh, I just saw him on the path of reflection, the Maishin clan master replied. I'll bring you guys over there. Shi Wei smiled from the side. It wasn't long before they arrived at the path of reflection. There, the white-clothed Shuiing was having difficulty in walking forward. He took step after step, despite having walked so far and his silhouette already being very small. Every step he took was even harder than the last. Shuiing is very formidable. He has already passed the first section and stepped onto the second, the Maishin clan master exclaimed. He has already gotten rid of the hex poison, and he has been cultivating under the conditions of Crimson Rock Mountain, which far exceed the mortal world. His time immemorial body also helped nourish his soul, so his progress is indeed extremely fast. While these few years have seen my strength improve by a lot, I was still completely suppressed by him no matter how many times we fought. He simply swept me away time and time again. Just as he finished talking. Who? Shui Ying collapsed on the distant stope steps and fell down onto the surface of the lake beneath him with a pung sound. His impact sent water from the lake splashing in every direction. He then immediately left the water and flew back toward the sky. As he stepped out, he saw Qin Jiu, the Maishin clan master, and Shi Wei in the corner of his eye. Ha ha. Shui Ying let out a hearty laugh. He rushed to where Qin Jiu and the others were with a speed so fast, he left behind after images in midair. Dongbo. Qin Jiu smiled brilliantly. Big brother Qin Jiu, congratulations. Shui Ying was very happy to see a close friend again. He was very clear of the burden Qin Jiu carried. Now that he became an honorary disciple, be it for the Flying Sword Manor or for Qin Jiu himself, it was a sign that the hard times were over and that the good times were coming. <laughs>